For it to be saved for years to come, that's gonna be fantastic. Oh, I didn't even cut that. You're doing your recording, you're doing the cast recording. Wow, I mean, today, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I'm gonna be on an album. It's all strange doing the show again, and they've recreated, in effect, the Sullivan Street Playhouse on 50th and Broadway. So it's like a doppelganger of the Sullivan Street Playhouse where it played all those years and all the people came through to see it, but all the people came through who were in it. I guess the reason it's the longest running musical that's ever played is because it touches some sort of basic human emotion that we all share. Try to remember the kind of September when life was slow and oh so mellow. Try to remember and if you remember then follow. Tom and I have been working together as partners, writing musicals for 50 years. We met at the University of Texas in 1948. We both came to New York in 1955, I guess it was. We started collaborating then on a musical based on a Rostand play called The Romancers. We finally pulled it together and made it into the Fantastics, which opened off-Broadway at the Sullivan Street Playhouse on May 3rd, 1960, and ran into 2002. We ran through 10 presidents. There's a reason it's been around. It's just a lovely love story about innocence and um, mature love. Love, you are love, better far than a metaphor can ever, ever be. Love, you are love, my mystery of love. In talking to Tom as we started rehearsals, I started realizing more and more that my character in particular is a lot of him when he was younger. And then slowly over time, I've been stealing from him mannerisms and vocal things that he does that are very specific to him. It's been frustrating because I know he hears it a certain way and I want to replicate everything that he hears in his head. I had to realize, you know, I guess I can't do that and I have to be like my own Louisa. And once I started doing that, I think him and I found this nice connection. I'd like to swim in a clear blue stream where the water is icy cold. Then go to town in a golden gown and have my fortune told. Just once, just once, just once before I mourn. There's a very controversial song the story goes, and it's a true story, Tom told me, Tom Jones, well, they did a production of the show at this um, Catholic school. One nun said, we have a problem with this rape song. They said, we don't like that. The one nun said, could you change it to Snatch? so simple and so deep at the same time. There's so much juice to it. To simple songs like Soon It's Gonna Rain, where like Harvey Schmidt said that that was supposed to be almost like a children's play song, like dun 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 dun. Soon it's gonna rain, I can feel it. Soon it's gonna rain, I can tell. And we'll not complain if it never stops at all. We'll live and love within our own four walls. I go in every night and I'm just, I'm happy to be there. I was happy to be at rehearsal. I'm happy to be at the performance. I love the company. And especially when we get out on the stage and there are little kids in the audience and People are just smiling and, you know, you get to talk to people and it's just, it's a joy. Take away the sense of drama. Take away the puppet play. What at night seems oh so scenic, maybe cynic, 
by today. Take away the secret meetings. Take away the chance to fight. What a night seems oh so scenic. Maybe cynic in the light. I'm astonished and delighted if it touches people. That's what it's about. You want, but it's the creating of it is 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 the life fulfilling thing. Tom is recreating his original part, playing the old actor, which he did more brilliantly than anybody I'd ever seen do it through the years. When he puts on his old actor outfit and he stands up and he's in all that glorious makeup and wigs and stuff, it's just like something out of a storybook. Orchestra, accelerando con molto. I was in the original company in 1960 with Jerry Arbach and the others under the same assumed name that I'm using now, Thomas Bruce, from May 3rd when we opened until Christmas and then I haven't played it here since 1960. <laughs> I can see it shining somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. That, that was good, wasn't it? Do you want that image? It's not my key, but I'm... I'm there, but just sounded wonderful. Well, I've done the role before, down on Sullivan Street, from 1978 to 86. I was in it in its 13th year with Marty Morris and Phil Killian. I played the mute in college in 1967 or something like that, 68. And after 20 years to go back into a show and find more, I mean, it just, it, and your experiences over 20 years and what's happened in my life, and I'm sure in many other people's lives, it, it just makes everything more precious, more valuable. When the moon was young, when the month was May, when I tried to find rainbows far away, I saw shining lights, but I never knew they were you, they were you, they were you. I'm glad that it's back again. I can hardly believe that it's back so soon. And I'm grateful for these producers and I'm grateful for Tom. Uh, and pleased that once he's doing that role one more time and <laughs> doing it before he's too old to play the old actor. At the end, as he goes back into his coffin-like box, he says to the audience, remember me in light. And that's the way, one reason I wanted to like bring back this production because I wanted to do it one more time and I also wanted to get the production in good shape and I want to remember me and remember the production in light. All oh, my wildest dreams is multiplied by two. They were you. They were you. They were you.